heard the news that Harry Chapin had died. I was shaken to my core and enormously sad. I'd listened to Harry since early in my high school days. Um, I'd seen him in concerts numerous times and all the way through college. And I was probably 20 then uh, in my last year of college when Harry died. And, you know, I later introduced my husband and children to Harry Chapin's songs and even to his, his brother Steve's music, which the kids loved and so did we. We listened to for years. Um, then, more recently, on September 1st, I heard the news that Jimmy Buffett had died. And I couldn't believe how sad I felt. In fact, I've cried periodically um, since then, um, you know, when reading social media posts or articles uh, about him or watching videos people have posted of, um, you know, of, of him singing um, his last, the last time he appeared on stage, all of those things. I started listening to Jimmy's music right after I graduated from college. Um, I went to several of his concerts and again, introduced my husband uh, to his songs. The first concert I took my stepkids to um, was a Jimmy Buffett concert. And my husband and I danced to his song, uh, Survive, uh, at our wedding. Um, and went to see him in concert again not that long ago in Sacramento. So Jimmy's music has been the soundtrack of my life since I was 21 or 22 years old, more than 40 years um, you know, I think back over my life and I can pick out musicians whose music um, has been on my life's soundtrack, like Billy Joel and Southside Johnny and the Asbury Jukes and James Taylor and Meatloaf and Carly Simon and Bruce Springsteen, just, just to name a few. And I'd probably mourn their passing as well, um, as they're all getting older, of course. And, and I did mourn Meatloaf's passing, um, but I didn't have quite the same reaction um, when he died. Although I was sad and had great memories like attending um, a concert of his with my high school sweetheart and seeing his musical twice, once in London and once in, um, in New York City, um, of singing his songs with my kids. Uh, my son in particular loves Meat Loves Music. So where am I going with all of this? Um, why did Jimmy Buffett's death have such an impact on me? Well, you know, we could say it's the promise of life being a beach. Um, for me, yeah, you know, the last time I saw him in concert, I, I said to my husband, we should go live at the beach. <laughs> um, maybe it's also his vaguely metaphysical and positive messages that came across in his songs. Um, and then of course, there are the life experiences that I associate with him and his music, like driving to the beach, long drives to the beach, singing sharks with the kids and doing hand motions, you know, sharks to the right, sharks to the left, um, being at the beach and playing his music, um, or even right after college, you know, getting together with my volleyball friends and um, having parties and with huge bowls of what we call boat drinks and listening to Jimmy Buffett. Today, I listen to mostly positive music. Um, for years, I really needed that. Um, to uplift me since I felt stuck and um, you know, stuck in, in many, many ways. Um, in high school, I listened to sad music, appropriate for a serious young girl who was always feeling like love was eluding her in some way, right? Um, and yeah, I just, you know, I was that sad, serious kid in high school. Um, when my marriage was suffering, uh, I listened to music that voiced my anger and sadness and disappointment and frustration, my desire to stand in my power and make, you know, feel free to make choices. Sometimes, um, you know, it's something really to think about, the importance of music in your life, how it lifts you up, brings you down, makes you feel understood, helps you process your emotions and your experiences. You know, think back over your life. What artists did you listen to when you were a teenager? And what about in college or afterward, you know, as a young adult or <clears throat> even now? What do you listen to now? Who do you listen to now? What kind of music? What does that say about you then and now? If you were to choose music to uplift you, to help you feel happy and hopeful and filled with love, 
what artist would you put on your playlist? You can choose and it impacts how you feel because there's science behind all of this talk of the playlists of your life um, without going into a lot of, um, a lot of detail. <clears throat> Um, I'll just tell you that the, the little research I've done to date has shown that listening to music can reduce your anxiety, um, reduce your blood pressure, and reduce your pain, as well as improve sleep quality, mood, mental alertness, and memory. So maybe we should be thinking about the music we, we listen to. You know, I often listen to Mozart when I work because it's supposed to help you focus, right? I go up to um, Santa Fe to see... Um, uh, the wife of a friend of mine and teacher of mine who, and they, they have a, a vibro, vibro acoustic bed. It's vibro acoustic therapy. And you lie on this bed and there are coils underneath that vibrate. And there are speakers all around you and they play very loud music at different hurt, levels of hertz. Or I don't know how you say that, but you know, so it might be 280 hertz or it might be 880 hertz. I'm making that up. But Basically, you lie there and the music vibrates through your body and through your etheric body, and it makes a difference to, you know, your healing process. And, um, you know, it can also open your chakras and all kinds of things. But it, it basically, you go to have sound healing and you lie on this bed and it, you, you, uh, you get the vibrations of the music, right? So... I just want to encourage you to think about the playlists that you have. Are they angry and combative? Because if so, you're adding that to your energy field and to your emotion, you know, your mood and all of that. And it's probably not helping your health. But if you're listening to music that's uplifting, that's, um, uh, you know, like Mozart or that uh, has, you know, positive messages that's going to uplift you and it's going to help heal you and make you feel good it's going to change your mood for the better so it's really important to think about music that we listen to um some of us stick to all the music that we've known for most of our lives the playlists of our lives my husband's like that um, mine is a mix of the old and the new I know my son, who's a dancer, is always listening to music, always finding new artists to listen to. Um, I love going to events where there's a playlist, like um, when I went to Tony Robbins' um, Unleash the Power Within, and when I go to Brendan Burchard's events, they have playlists, and it's always uplifting music with great messages, and it makes you want to get up and dance and jump up and down, and, and, and I feel good at those events, right? So... Really pay attention to the music you listen to and to the artists you listen to and consider how they're impacting you and create playlists that support you in feeling happy and um, loved and loving and strong and powerful. It doesn't mean that you can't listen to some music that's sad because sometimes we need to process those emotions and music helps us process those emotions. Right? So feeling sad, have you ever heard a sad song, you know, sad lyrics and you cried? It's good. It's helping you bring out those emotions and release them. And sometimes, you know, we need to change our mood. We need to shift from feeling sad or negative or angry into being, you know, happier or more positive or hopeful or whatever. And you can choose music to help you do that. You can choose music to heal your body, your emotions, and your soul. So see what you think. You hear the chimes in the background? I bought those because they sound like church bells. Made me feel like, you know, that my space was sacred. All kinds of music out there. We're about to have a drum circle in two weeks here at our home. And, um, you know, that's a different type of music that almost anyone can participate in. So think about that, about making your own music. But do carefully choose the soundtracks and pay attention to the soundtracks of your life, past, present, and future, and see how they impact you. Consciously, intentionally choose playlists that impact you in ways that are positive and that help you move forward and um, 
yeah, be happy and hopeful and loving and positive. Let me know what you think. I'd love to know about your playlists. Um, yeah, so leave me a comment down below and let me know what your playlists are, past, present, and what you plan for the future, okay? If you don't know me, I'm Nina Amir, the Inspiration to Creation Coach. I'm a certified high performance coach and an um, intuitive um, transformational catalyst or coach. And um, I love getting people from where they are to where they want to go. I love helping them um, go from who they are to who they want to be or know they can be so that they can fulfill their potential, um, achieve their purpose, and live a life that feeds their soul. So if that's of interest to you, I support people in that in the Inspired Creator community. And the link is up above. You can click on the link um, and join at any time. Uh, we, I offer their personal and spiritual growth uh, coaching and training because that's, um, you know, we're spiritual beings having a human experience. We need both. So um, if you would like to go on that journey, to step into your best self and to create, you know, be, be a powerful creator, intentional creator. You're creating all the time, but to be a powerful, intentional creator and get inspired to do that, click on the link and I'll see you inside the Inspired Creator community. And until next time, go out there and achieve more inspired results. Mm -hmm.